can't tell you how many times I've gotten emails from people telling me that they feel like they've wasted their life. I get emails from people who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, who they feel like they just wasted time. They feel like they chose the wrong path. They feel like they did what society wanted them to do instead of what they wanted to do. And, you know, there's still time for those people to change their situation. Uh, but for those of you who are in that phase where you're trying to figure out what to do with your life and you still have time, it's an important thing to figure out. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to decide what to do with your life so that you don't find yourself in a position years later, decades later, feeling like you wasted it. But before we get to that, make sure to quickly use the engagement tools on whatever platform you're on to engage with this video. So if that's YouTube, that means subscribing to the channel, hitting the notification bell. If that's Instagram, it's sharing it to your story, letting all your friends know. Anywhere else, use the tools on the platform to share and recommend the video. Okay, it's... You know, it's a big, it's a big deal. It's a big question. Uh, a lot of people, you know, especially in recent years with the rise of self-improvement and a lot of these people talking about finding your purpose and figuring out what to do with your life, uh, people are under a lot of pressure to kind of figure out what they should be doing with the rest of their life. You know, if you go back to past generations, maybe people didn't put as much thought into it or care as much about finding their purpose, right? They just went to work at the factory. They just went to work and do, do they went to the corporate job for 40 years and called it a day. But you know, we have this new generation now where you're told that you should be finding your purpose, that you should be doing something that makes you feel passionate. And this puts people in a kind of a precarious position, right? Because, you know, especially like if you're around my age and your late twenties or thirties, that's kind of the time where you are in this flux and you feel like if you don't do something now, if you don't make a change now, then you're going to be stuck in a situation that you don't want to be in. And this applies this applies to people all across the spectrum. That's kind of the target demographic of this video, but pretty much anyone can be in a position where they want to change things, they want to figure out how to do something else other than what they're doing right now so that they can feel happy, they can feel content, they can feel like they have a purpose. So with that being said, there's a lot of different ways that you can look at this, but before I even get to the recommendations, I'm going to give you an overall idea of what you should be doing to move in the right direction. So before I even before I even get to the specific tips about what you should be doing to try to figure out what you might want to do with your life, you know, tips to help you decide what to do with your life, I'm going to tell you that if you stumble upon something that is going to make sense for you, you're never going to get there unless you go through an experimental phase where you actually dedicate some level of effort to doing whatever it is you're deciding to do on this new life path of yours, right? So, you know, I use myself in the, as an example. When I decided that I wanted to give writing a try, I stuck with it for about 90 days before I really got some footing and felt like it was something that might be worth doing, right? So whenever I talk to people, I like using that using that timeline, that framework. Take 90 days to experiment with trying something new that you can move in a different direction in your life and actually commit to that time frame and then see what the results look like after that. Insight number one for people, one way to help you figure out what to do with your life is that pretty much throughout your whole life, people have been telling you what you are good at. People have been giving you little hints and ideas of things that you should be doing, right? So we kind of have this blind, we, we have a little bit of a blind spot to our own talents, to our own strengths, but people often will see things in us and they'll kind of point it out, right? So throughout my entire life, people would say things like, oh, you know, you're very articulate, a lot of people would come up to me and say that I have a really nice voice. Like I've been told on multiple occasions that I should be on radio or doing something with audio. Um, when I wrote papers and stuff in high school, my teachers would comment that my writing skills were good. I would get up in class and I would do presentations off the cuff with no preparation 
and everybody would be amazed by them. And so I was a naturally good public speaker and people would tell me those things too. So I look back throughout my entire life, all these little things that people have been saying to me and it kind of leads in the direction to the things that I'm doing now. I'm on video. I have a podcast. I do writing. So I take advantage of my ability to be articulate, my ability to connect ideas and process information quickly. Another thing that I was told growing up was that I had a quick mind so that I could put things together, right? So there, there are signs. People will tell you things about yourself that you might not think are that important or special, but could be used in a direction to figure out what you want to do. So maybe someone has come up to you and said, wow, you're really fashionable. Where did you get those outfits from? How did you put that together? There are entire businesses where people are style consultants and they help pick people's outfits out or someone with style could figure out how to make an e-commerce brand where they're creating a clothing product. So you just got to, you have to think of those things that people say to you and you get feedback from all sorts of people. And some of the best feedback can come from people that are kind of two to three degrees separated from you. So like not necessarily your closest family and friends, but kind of people in your network, in your periphery, people who you kind of offhandedly know, when they mention things about you, it's really potent because they don't have too much invested into you where, where they need to go out of their way to make up something, right? But then they also know you a little bit, so there's a little bit of that qualification. So that's one thing to think about. What do people constantly tell you that you're good at? What are some things that you know seem really obvious to you that other people don't get. So you have you have an advantage. You have a lane that you can go on, but you have to pay attention to what the things or the things that people are saying around. Another thing you can do is, you know, you can there's a lot of different there are a lot of different tests that you can actually take to figure out what you might be good at. You know, there's strengths strengths test, uh strengths finder is a really really good test that I took a while back. There's all sorts of personality tests that you can take. And those can give you an idea of some things that you might want to do. So here's the reality when it comes to personality tests and everything like that. They're really not super scientifically accurate at all. Like they give they give you good ideas, but it's not as if you're just confined to whatever those tests tell you to do. They're just guidelines so that you can finally do something. Uh, deep down, a lot of people have an idea of what they would really want to do with their life, but they're just pretending like they don't know. So for those people, I send them in in the direction of strengths tests, and that'll give you some beneficial information. Like for example, the strengths finder test goes through and it has like a deep analysis of these 34 different strengths, and it can rank them for you. It gives you recommendations on the type of habits you should build based off of those. It gives you potential career ideas based off of those. And it goes into a lot of depth. And then you have your Myers-Briggs, your Enneagrams. There's all sorts of tests out there. Now, don't take them as like a literal horoscope of what exactly you need to be doing with your life. But get some ideas going out there. Get some feedback so that you can actually take a step in the direction of something you might want to do. So strengths tests, personality tests, while they're not the super most scientifically accurate thing you can do, they're going to help you move in a direction. So if you're really feeling stuck, give those a try as well. Honestly, honestly, this, this test is really, really good. And it was kind of the, it was a test that led me to figure out that I wanted to be a writer. So one thing, one thing that you're going to figure out is that there are a lot of things that you notice that you that you that you kind of see people doing. You're like, you know, that would be really cool if I could do that. You know, so I call that the it would be cool test. And for the longest time, I would always talk about how cool it would be to be a writer. I'd always talked about offhandedly, you know, I'd offhandedly mention to people the idea of wanting to write a book. Uh, I remember one time I was sitting in the car with my girlfriend at the time and we were just driving around. I was just got off of work, you know, working at a job I wasn't really feeling. And for whatever reason, the conversation just came up and I was like, you know what? I really, I really think that I should write. I, I really think it would be cool to write. And I really think writing is something that I want to give a try. So she just looked at me and said, okay, why don't you start writing then? Right? <laughs> and it's such a simple, it's such a simple statement, uh, but it's, it's really profound, right? 
there's a lot of things where you kind of look and you say, oh, wow, that would be really cool to do that. I re- that would be really cool to open up a nonprofit organization and help kids in Africa. It would be really cool to start a YouTube channel. It would be really cool to open a pet store. It would be really cool to start doing whatever, right? There's so many different, there's so many different paths that you could choose. And it all starts with you just honoring the things that you kind of already know that you want to do. There's something that you think would be really cool, but you don't want to do it because Maybe it deviates outside of the path society laid for you. You have to face pretty, you know, difficult levels of self-doubt, get over your fears in order to get that done. You know, something, something's blocking you, right? Some limiting beliefs, hidden scripts, things like that are blocking you. But when you remove those layers, there's definitely something out there that you know it would really be cool to try, but you actually have to do it. And the last thing I'll leave you with is that there, there's, there's no perfect answer to figuring out what to do with your life. The only thing that you can do is not waste time in this mode where you're speculating and thinking about what to do, right? So take 90 days to try something and then see if it works. You'll actually you'll actually know if you like it if you give it a try. Maybe you spend a couple years of your life working on a skill only to find that you wanna branch out and do more things. For example, I spent four to five years working on writing And then there was other things that I was interested in. I'm interested in doing video, in podcasts, in some of the coaching that I do, in some of the other products that I create, in investing, other different different interests that now I'm using that same process to explore. If something I see looks cool, then I give it a whirl. This YouTube was something that had been on my mind for a while, so I, I went really hard in the first 90 days and started doing a YouTube channel. Lo and behold, it's up and running and it's gonna be another piece of my life that I'm gonna continue to build. But there is there is no hesitation for actually doing the thing and circling back to the beginning of the video. Yeah. Think about your future. You don't want you really don't want to end up one of these people who looks back on their life with a lot of regrets and feels like they wasted time. And even if even if the things that you try right now don't work out, at least you'll know. Right. There's so many people walking around and they they just live with that idea of what could have been. So don't let that happen to you. Use some of these insights in the video so you can figure out what to do with your life. A great tool to help you figure out what to do with your life is my book, Real Help and Honest Guide to Self-Improvement. It goes through an extensive length, not just insights to help you figure out what to do, but it helps you get the mindset that you need to actually follow through. So make sure to grab that in the description on YouTube, link in bio on Instagram, posted somewhere on my other platforms as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Feel free to check out some other videos on my channels and social media handles. Had a blast shooting this one, and I will see you on the next video.